So let's talk about hypersynotic spells. So, um, this is an acute episode of cyanosis or hypersynosis in an already uh, cyanosed patient. So this occurs in patients that already have a congenital cyanotic heart disease and they last for 15 to 30 minutes. They are in emergency. So hypersynotic spells are in emergency and they can lead to death. Um, this is to differentiate them from the benign uh, breath holding spells. Um, the difference usually is that breath holding spells, they don't have an underlying um, congenital cyanotic heart disease and the age is from six months to six years for breath holding spells. For hypersynotic spells, they're usually okay from two months to six months. So those differences usually help us to distinguish um, the hypersynotic spells from a breath holding spells. So the pathogenesis of um, hypersynotic spells is similar to do with the reduced pulmonary blood flow. Um, and this can okay with increased pulmonary vascular resistance. Um, so, and in these patients that have a, a VSD, this can okay also with the reduced systemic vascular resistance because with this systemic vascular resistance that is reduced, there is increased shunting of the blood from the right to the left, so right to left shunting. And like um, we said, this is supposed to be the presence of a predisposing condition. And a predisposing condition is usually uh, any obstruction to pulmonary flow, as well as shunting of a, a ventricular septal defect, which can shunt blood from the right to the left. Or any uh, congenital cyanotic heart disease can predispose to hypersynotic spells. Okay, so the predisposing conditions to a hypersynotic spell um, is any condition that um, um, redu causes reduced uh, flow to the to the to the to the lungs as well as shunting of blood from the right to the left, like uh, VSDs and pulmonary stenosis. So, a condition that have VSDs and pulmonary stenosis predisposed to hypersynotic spells. So we see. Um, possibility of uh, hypersynotic spells, they are very common with the tetralogy of fallow. Um, this condition has got a VSD, a pulmonary stenosis, overriding ion and right ventricular hypertrophy. Then also double outlet right ventricle with VSD and pulmonary stenosis. Then there are other conditions which um, predispose to to this hypersynotic spell but don't have a VSD and pulmonary Okay, so the predisposing conditions to a hypersynotic spell um, is any condition that um, um, redu causes reduced uh, flow to the to the to the to the lungs as well as shunting of blood from the right to the left, like uh, VSDs and pulmonary stenosis. So, a condition that have VSDs and pulmonary stenosis predisposed to hypersynotic spells. So we see. Um, possibility of uh, hypersynotic spells, they are very common with the tetralogy of fallow. Um, this condition has got a VSD, a pulmonary stenosis, overriding ion and right ventricular hypertrophy. Then also double outlet right ventricle with VSD and pulmonary stenosis. Then there are other conditions which um, predispose to to this hypersynotic spell, but don't have a VSD and pulmonary so um, any other cyanotic heart disease may predispose to hypersynotic spell, but may not be typically um, pre predisposing as we fear to compare them with the VSD and pulmonary stenosis conditions. But conditions like tricuspid atresia, um, this will mean that there will be shunting of blood to the left and possibility of uh, this uh, PDA dependent and everything. Uh, then we see single ventricle uh, with the pulmonary stenosis. This also predisposes to hypersynthetic spells. Then transposition of great arteries. Um, and, um, well, we mentioned that increased pulmonary resistance um, uh, with the ACE and Menger syndrome may predispose to hypersynthetic spells. It's just note that the age group for ACE and Menger syndrome is not typical, uh, it's not the typical age at which we get hypersynthetic spells. 
but it's in Ming, it occurs in all the patients. In etiology of fallow, um, increased pulmonary resistance uh, can okay with crying. So if the patient with etiology of fallow start crying, they can go into a hypersonotic spell because crying increases uh, the pressure in the chest and reduces uh, pulmonary blood to the flow to the lungs. Any pain, so any painful procedures, uh, any cannulation or uh, IMI injections can cause precipitate hypersonotic spells. Then any breath holding can precipitate a hypersonotic spell. Then in pneumonia, so any infection in the lungs, uh, which can cause hypoxia, can lead to high vasoconstriction. And if there's vasoconstriction, this will um, also increase pulmonary resistance. And since they have a VSD and increased pulmonary pressures, they can shunt their blood to the right, to the to the left side. So right to left shunts uh, will reduce flow to the lungs. Then polycythemia, this causes hyperviscosity, and they can be clogging of the uh, pulmonary vessels. So um, decreased systemic vascular resistance can precipitate a high parasitic spell in a patient with cytology of fallow. This is because um, it decreased systemic vascular resistance promotes right to left shunting. And uh, so if more blood is sent to the left side, there will be less blood going to the lungs. And this can occur with fever. It can also occur during bathing. It can occur uh, with exercise uh, and after waking up. Then also note of hypovolemia. So if there's um, reduced blood volume, this means the systemic vascular resistance is also reduced. And this can precipitate uh, this. And also the fact that there's hypovolemia simply means even the blood that's going to the lungs is also reduced because generally the blood volume is low. Then tachyarrhythmia, this means the heart is not pumping blood well. So there's reduced uh, flow to the lungs, there's reduced flow, uh, systemic vascular resistance, and this will precipitate a hypersinotic spell. So increased pulmonary resistance um, also uh, will cause, um, like I said, increased, uh, increase, this is increase, in right to left shunting, so the oxygenated blood is being shunted to the left, and this uh, blood will then um, uh, go to the um, to stimulate the respiratory center. So you see that if the, uh, the respiratory center is stimulated because of more deoxygenated blood passing through it, this will cause um, hypopnea, which is a rapid uh, and deep breathing. So the patient will start having deep, rapid breathing. And this is one of the um, uh, characteristics of um, the hypersinotic spell that they have a uh, deep, rapid breathing that occurs in them. Um, so this is increase, increased uh, right to left shunts. So management of uh, hypersinotic spells, it's an emergency. Hypersinotic spell is an emergency. Um, you can do airway just check if there's no foreign body, but what you need to do first is to put the patient in the knee to chest position. Uh, this will help to uh, increase uh, blood flow to the lungs. And um, then we need oxygen, so the patient needs to be put on 100% oxygen. Uh, this will reduce systemic vascular resistance and also uh, eventually increase oxygen, uh, oh, um, blood flow to the lungs and uh, reperfusion. Then morphine. Morphine is known to decrease uh, pulmonary vascular resistance by doing pulmonary vasodilation. And it also reduces anxiety. So it reduces the secretion of catecholamines. mines. Uh, and we know that catecholamines mines are implicated in the development of hypersinotic spells. Um, so this is part of the treatment. Okay, so treatment of hypersinotic spells also involves um, correcting hypovolemia. So you can give uh, a bolus of 20 mils per kg of normal saline if the patient is dehydrated. And you can also correct anemia by transfusing uh, pig cells. Then we can monitor the pulse and the blood pressures. We correct the rehydration, the dehydration. Then uh, metabolic acidosis uh, is one of the precipitating factors for uh, hypersonic exposure. So the patient will need adequate oxygen therapy. And you may also need to give serum bicarbonate. Okay, then phenylephrine, um, this is given to increase systemic vascular resistance and eventually to increase, uh, to reduce left, right to left shunting and to in eventually increase blood flow to the lungs. 
um, then beta blockers these help to reduce pulmonary vascular resistance and they can help to relax the infundibular spasm so after the spell a full central nervous system examination should be done including a cranial nerves examination um, then beta blockers should be started um, this would help to prevent recurrent episodes then this patient should be seen by a cardiologist as soon as possible and uh, there should be preparation for surgery to correct whatever underlying condition that is there because as long as the patient has had an upper anatomic tick spell they are at risk of um, another episode okay so um so if the patient is having fits or seizures maybe during the feed during the spell or afterwards this can be treated with diazepam or midazolam. Um, then the investigations that we need, uh, full blood count, we're checking for anemia. Um, remember, anemia can actually trigger a hypersenotic spell. So investigations that we do, um, like we said, anemia can, 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 can precipitate a uh, hypersenotic spell. We also need to check for thrombocytopenia. And we need to check for signs of infection. Any underlying infection can precipitate a vascular spell. Then we also need to check for polycythemia. So we also check um, the hematocrit. Because um, a polycythemia is a predisposing factor. Then you can do arterial blood gases. This is to check for acidosis. Okay. Post uh, fitting also a uh, post spell. Uh, it's important to have a CT scan of the brain done, um, then an ECG um, to check for tachy arrhythmias and um, other typical ECG changes that are seen with the um, typical um, hypersenotic spell predisposing conditions. So on X-ray. Um, usually, if this is a, a hypersenotic spell in a patient with tetralogy of fallow, checking for the signs of tetralogy of fallow on x ray. So, this is a, a tetralogy of fallow causes right ventricular hypertrophy, and uh, this will make the heart look like boot shaped. Okay, so the apex will be evaded, and the, there's reduced blood flow to the lungs. So, the uh, lung fields will be oligemic um, lung fields. Those are the features of uh, tetralogy of fallow on x ray. And then echocardiograph can show the lesion that we have, um, whatever lesion that we have, we can see it on echo. Okay, then um, we'll discuss why hypersenotic spells are very rare after the age of two. Um, first thing is because the respiratory center is matured, so the respiratory center matures after the age of two. And um, the other thing is. Um, the other reason for hypersenotic spells being rare after two years is um, the development of collaterals. So we know that with the conscious acceleration of fallow, um, they are uh, dependent on the PDA, but also if there is a connection between the iota and the pulmonary artery, uh, that collateral can actually help. So the, those development of such collaterals after two years of age help to prevent a hypersenotic spell. And also, these children learn to squat. So as they grow, they learn that if they squat, um, they can actually reduce um, these, these episodes. So they, they just adapt by themselves and they start squatting. And there's also a, a issue that the fibrosis of infantibular spasm occurs. And if this is okay, it means uh, of, of the infantibular occurs so that they, it can no longer have spasms.